Hey, the delightful cottage. Hey, thank you for stopping by. We just got started, so thanks for coming in. It is very cold in Mississippi. It is too cold. We're trying to see we, if the kids will turn on the TV. We had icicles out. hanging off of stuff this morning, and that's not very common here in the South. No, no, it's not, especially this time of year. Mm -mm. Usually, we get that closer to the end of December, 1st of January. We have had a... I want to say, what, two years ago, two years ago, we had icicles. It was really cold. Everything froze up. But last year, we didn't have that. It was um, more towards the end of the year, like I said. And I know if it's cold in the south, I know it's cold everywhere. It's, actually, Kentucky got a pretty good bit of snow. We saw the Stivers pictures of snow and Freedom Homestead had snow. Um, Michigan had snow. We saw. I saw where the Pratt family had snow too. So that's if it's going to be cold, at least it's pretty cold, huh? Yeah, we haven't. We need some more weather, um, rain-wise. But the coolness is what's kind of uh, scares a little bit because we have uh, all the stuff planted. We probably should plant our peas. You'll see hey, in the next two videos. Farms. We pretty much lost our peas and all this. I uh, lost some of our peppers, but most of it we've kept covered. So we're hoping that uh, some of this Sally. will go away. Arizona <laughs> isn't cold. Well, it's we're not supposed to be here. this cold this early mm -hmm. in the year. Usually we don't have a winter until like January, yep. February. So we're I think I it. lost my basil too. I went out today into the greenhouse and I forgot to turn. I just had just the heat lamp on. I forgot to turn the heaters on and my basil looks really bad. So I think I'm going to lose it too. I'm hoping that we hold on to the cabbage and the broccoli and the lettuces. I think they'll be fine. The greens looked okay today. Yeah, I checked on them. So. Say they, all that stuff looks, still looked okay. Um, my basil, I'm pretty sure, all, even though we covered the peppers, it was so cold. I, I think we lost most of that stuff, too. Some of them we did. Some of them we did. Um, I know we've been on calf watch. If, Y'all have been following us. Hey, we, Grammy Karen. Hey, Grammy Karen. We did have one calf. It was a beef cow. It actually was with our other herd up at the bigger farm that we have and we were partnered with. But they, um, it was a little baldy. If you've ever seen a little baldy, it's a little bald, baldy bull calf. But we're still on uh, dairy cow watch out here. Uh, we've been babying her for the last She's few days. So. Any day now, like she is about to pop. She cannot even walk straight. So we're just waiting. Yeah, she, um, I keep training her thinking, well, this is going to be it. This is the night. This is the night. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a blanket. A blanket? That's an older blanket, actually. Yeah, that blanket is back. really, really old. Hey, supper at seven. Yep, that, that blanket was pretty old. So for the ones that's on here so far, what is the temperatures that you have in your towns or cities or areas right now? And Allie, I went out two or three days ago. I knew for sure. I was like, this is the day. She is so swollen. So me and Aiden went out and we loaded up the Ranger like full of hay. We drove it around. If y'all have ever seen Colby's milk um, stanchion on the other side is the covered shed. And we loaded it up with hay. Anna put a heat lamp in there because I thought if she has this baby and it's raining and it's freezing, hey Mount Life, it's gonna get it's gonna get cold if she has it at night. So um, I made her a little warm place, but she's still holding on to that baby, y'all. I like it, John. Hey, Josh, how are 27, you, man? Twenty-seven wind chill of twenty. Mm. That's about, that's not too much different than ours. Now, yeah. ours is the earlier the 10, so she's on country farm. Your, your temperature is kind of crazy. Pete's little home said, said 19 degrees. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't like this cold weather, y'all. I'm ready for it to warm back up some. J and C is actually a little bit warmer than us. Yep. I think Sally's way warmer than us. Yep. Yeah. I kept thinking, you know, I want this calf, I want this calf, I want this calf because we've been short meal. But, um, these last few days of being 20 degrees, I'm like, please, this calf needs to hold off. This calf needs to hold off. So hopefully she will deliver. We're supposed to have a little bit warmer in the next few days. So I'm hoping, or not warmer, but, you know, 40s and 50s. Versus. Versus 30s and 20s. So. Well, the 30, the highs today was in the 30s, I right? Know. I just went hunting a while ago and it, I froze. 
Lots yeah, of fresh milk. 20s we, and 30s. We have been without fresh milk for about a month and a half. Oh, yeah, about two months. Two months. So we went from having great milk to where we had to buy store-bought milk Aww. until this one. Our kids complain up. every time we drink it. Hey, Mimsies. How are you? Hi, South Mississippi. Cold, too. Yeah, John and Christy, what, what kind of temperature are y'all having up there? I imagine they're way colder there in Montana. So, Okay, not too bad. Yeah, I was saying earlier, Mimsy, I think that, Mimsy Gordon, I think that we've lost a few things because it's been so cold. Our basil, a few a few of the things that don't tolerate cold very well, we were hoping to hold on to. But just got too cold. When it gets down in the 20s and 30s here, it's just... They have the essentials. You can't have anything. Yeah, and see, the thing is, too, is... This has made us have to really think about moving our uh, growing our fall fall and winter growing season up a little bit. Um, compared to last year, our peas would have made it. Uh, we didn't really have cold weather up until like December, so we would yeah. have peas. You know, two so, years before that is when it was yeah, really cold. it was really cold. But last year was was just a normal year. So I think we're about to move our growing seasons up. That's one good thing about journaling all these things down in notes is we remember. Okay, well, what we need to do, when we need to do it, uh, because everything needed to be moved up this year compared to where we plant, but we based it off last year. So we'll learn our lesson year over year. It seems like every other year we're having a, a bad cold year, and, and that's okay. We just need to plan for it. JNC's Oregon Homestead said they lost quite a bit too. Yeah, and, and I just looking at the numbers coming through on the chat, I mean, it's amazing to me. It's like this Arctic blast just come in. And I mean, it's amazing how many people that it's affected from north to south, east to west. It's affected so many people. I mean, there's a few states that it hasn't got quite as cold, like Arizona. But for the most part, it's, it's been pretty cold. Hey, Pine Knot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You know what's so crazy is um, our little piglets. A while ago, I forgot to tell you this. When we were, when I came back from hunting and I walked past the pigs, and the five little piglets were inside their little uh, covering, and the two big piglets were kind of covering them. They were all sitting in the hay together. So That's I thought sweet. that was real neat. What I, and talking about when I went, when Aiden and I went out um, to put hay in Allie's place, where we're when she when I start. Noticing signs of her going into labor. Hey, Amy. Um, I've been watching her very close, probably about every five or six hours. I go out there and just kind of check on her. And um, when I do notice her going into labor, I'm going to move her over in that side. So she'll have that fresh bed of hay and that heat lamp, um, especially if it's in the afternoon, because I know at night that ca the calf will really need it. During the day, it's not terrible. It's cold, but I wouldn't be as... Um, concerned but at night is really where my concern is but anyway the little building that colby was talking about it's like he built it out of crates so if any of y'all have ever watched our pig videos you'll see the little pallets. um their little pallets enclosure yeah the, but what would you call their little covering um is built out of like the pallet little crates that has the slits in it so I was wondering the other night, I was like, those little piglets are so small. I hate for them to get wet and it be so cold. Um, so what I did is took some hay and I stuffed in those holes and basically built walls, filled in the holes with hay. So it's like pallets with hay walls. <laughs> and anyway, but I'm, I'm glad to know that they went in there. And um, Hey, Homestead in the Pioneer Way and making lemonades from lemons. Put them a bunch of hay in there in the bottom, and the I'm glad that they went great. there. They're actually growing, unbelievable. They're, They're really sweet too. They're actually yeah. very. Um, we need to do an update on our meat chickens too. They're huge. They've yeah. gotten they've big, grown so. tremendously as well. We're supposed to move them out outdoors. They they're still in our garage in our big uh, big monster uh two and a half toes, acres. So. Thanks for joining us. Hey, two and a half acres. Fine, nine. I'm guessing y'all made it home safe last all your last two videos. So hopefully you won't have any more hey, tired issues. Family Ranch. Trying to catch up on I know, I'm trying to do the same reading. thing. But yeah, the COVID are trying to adjust to the cold. 
Um, we have a lot of baby animals right now with the baby pigs and the meat birds and the per per permaculture. Per permaculture chickens. I'll get it out. And um, so trying to adjust to the cold and waiting on Allie's baby, like we said. So a lot of little creatures that we're trying to watch out for right now. What you think? I was laughing at two and a half acres. Uh, we were going to sing a duet, Baby, It's Cold Outside. I don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> We'd sing the old Frank Sinatra version, though. Hey, Samson Farms. Maybe hey. dance, but yeah. I don't sing. <laughs> hey, Penniless Plantation. Y'all would have to turn the volume down. <laughs> I do have her a dancing video. She She's threatened for me not to put it up, but I think it's pretty funny. You better not put it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was dancing with the kids when the... I don't even remember. What was the song that was so popular? Huh? What was the song that was so popular a few weeks ago? It was like a big, come on, y'all know it. it up. Yeah, get that's up. all right. So I was dancing with the kids and he secretly recorded me and I didn't know it. I told him that I would be like. He tried Mimsy, to are you blaming that. on me? Are you blaming that on me, Mimsy? She put Julie earlier, Pine Knot Farms. I saw that. I didn't say anything. Hey, Organic Raw Roots Farm, the Sunshine State. Are y'all cold down in the Sunshine State? Hey, hey, Heather. I guess it depends on how far south you go. I don't know. I talked to, we were talking to Hank with Hamiltonville Farm a while ago, and he cold? said they were cold up there. So and they, they're on the north part. So uh, he said they started getting some cool weather from, like we did. Yeah, so. I, that, that's what I was saying. That Arctic blast has come in, and it really has affected everybody. I mean, there was snow everywhere. Um, so I guess winter is definitely officially here, which I'd rather have winter now. I don't know about y'all. Like when, when Thanksgiving and Christmas comes, it's supposed to be cold. And so lately what we've had, Hey, Hamiltonville Farms. Hey, we were just talking about y'all, Hank. Uh, lately we have winter like after December. So like January, February is our winter here in Mississippi. So I'm just glad that we're having some, some actually cool weather. So I'm enjoying it. I'm not going, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we actually, uh, like I said, I went hunting a while ago, and I like to froze. And usually around this time, especially during during uh, bow season, I'm usually in short sleeve or either in light a uh, light shirt. So I'm not a fan. Hey, Diane and Justice Acres, I'm not a fan. Everybody's been sharing their temperatures. The Arctic blast has hit. Um, except for Arizona. Yeah, except for Arizona. <laughs> oh, look at that. He's in Miami, and they're 77 right now. Wow. 35. I will take <laughs> 77. That's, That's funny. Nice. That is nice. Misty loves hot weather. I, I don't, I'm not too crazy about hot weather. I like cool. Weather. I will take 70s, 80s, 90s all day. It gets below 60 and I want to go in. <laughs> Organic raw roots. What part of Mississippi are y'all from? And two and a half acres. Where are y'all coming from to go to Gulf Shores? See, we're only about three and a half hours from Gulf we're, Shores. We're pretty far. I mean, we're not very far. To get away from the cold. Hey, I don't blame See, Josh, you. now Josh, he says he's 100 today. He's actually, I think, in Australia, if I'm right, Josh. Uh, what? What's, so what is your temperature right now in, in Well, in they're Australia? going into summer. When we're going into winter, they're yeah. going into summer. That's crazy to me. I mean, it's amazing, actually. Two and a half acres, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So you got a pretty good little drive there. Mm-hmm. First time my calf seen the okay. snow, she loved it. That's Organic Ro Raw Roots Farm, you're actually like 20 minutes from us, so you're not far at all um, compared to where we're at. So that's cool. Yep. We're actually on the south side of, of our county, so we're actually a lot closer to Macomb. Than Amy said Florida is getting a cold front tomorrow night. So I guess the central to south part yeah, of Florida. Run in there. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Uh, I watched uh, another... Australian Channel too, Josh, and they were talking about the fires and, and talking about everything going on down there and how it's getting warmer. So, hey, Osborne Originals, forty-four in Louisiana. Carlton Family Farms, how are you? From South Arkansas, you're not too wow. terribly far mm -hmm. from us. Not at all. Not too far at all. Hey, Misty, how are you? Um, yeah. So, so anyway, so we 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 had a little calf born. Uh, we're still waiting on our not well, Allie's, not, not not Allie's Allie's. cow. So Little Feet Farm Homestead, <laughs> we did have a calf born, but it is it's one of our meat cows. 
Um, it's actually my father's meat cow that's with our cat, our big bull up there. If y'all remember Ferdinand. So that group of cows, um, one of those cows were born. It was a little baldy. We're still on watch here now. Yeah. Um, but we, we did have one little calf, but not the calf. That Allie, we the Jersey. <laughs> Allie, the Jersey is the one that we're watching. She's the one with the big horns. And she is it's like any dirty nail. She has us on pins and needles, y'all. We so go out and check on her constantly. We got the bull, this bull that bred her January 31st. February 1st, those two days. So if she had a calf, we, we added it up. He was with her. I mean, he's been with her ever since. Um, that first week is when I think he bred her um, because that's what we saw. We saw that he was very aggressive with her and she was uh, bouncing around. So I'm thinking Allie should have a calf this week. I mean, this should be the week. Uh, now, you know how that goes. That's just us uh, wishful thinking, I guess. Because uh, we're ready for milk again. So yes, we are. Hey, Stivers, how are y'all? But we want a healthy mama and a healthy baby. So yeah. um Carlton Family Farm says that they love baldies. They have two new ones right now. Oh wow. We have we have two baldies as well. One of ours is Ike, who is our meat cow here. And then we have um we have this to new get one. So fixed. yeah, so so this next week, since it's gotten colder here, we will actually be making uh, Ike uh, have a bad day, so he will actually. <laughs> yeah, y'all have haven't day, seen so. that video. It's name. Yeah, he's about to have a bad day, and that's what we've been waiting on is the weather to get a little bit cooler. Yeah, and he's gonna go on a little journey to see a friend that's yeah. gonna fix him. We can't, we can't ban him this this late in the game. Uh, I kind of waited. If 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 you know, most times if you're making a steer out of a bull, most time you do it quick. I mean, like for instance, this little bull calf, this little new body we got. Uh, we'll actually probably go ahead and make him a steer really quick, probably in the next week or so. But this one, he was growing off so pretty. And, it, you know, as a, as a as someone who has cows, we were hoping, okay, is this going to be the next bull? Is this our replacement bull? And then Ferdinand, you know, Ferdinand will be the, <laughs> he will go to a freezer. <laughs> but to be honest with you, as beautiful as this little cow he is, or boy he is. He really is he's, pretty. He is, he's beautiful. But Ferdinand is a monster. So we're going to let Ferdinand just be the, the breeder. And I make this one a steer. I, so I, I think, kept telling bit. Colby, I was like, we've got to pick one. Now we have to have yeah, something we don't to need put three in the bowls. freezer. We have three bowls and we don't need three bowls. We've so. got to pick something to put in the freezer and we've got to quit <laughs> wanting to make them all daddies. I mean, it's nice to be able to grow our herd, but at the same time, like one of them has to fulfill a purpose. So <laughs> anyway, Stivers, we saw that y'all got some snow. Yeah, Carlton family. Our our Ike should be. We're hoping by March or April he will actually be the one uh, heading to the be, freezer. Um, you think it'll be that soon? Yeah, so I'm probably not gonna let him get to about eight or nine hundred pounds. That's about as big as I'm gonna let him get. Uh, hey, Homestead J. Yeah, look good. Look like your uh, your uh, raised garden's held up pretty good too. Um, we saw that. Freedom Homestead and the Pratt family, all that area got a pretty good bit of snow. But hey, I'm going to be honest. If it's going to be freezing outside, I would rather it be freezing and pretty than just freezing. Well, we did have some icicles hanging off today. I actually snapped some pictures of them and put them on Instagram and Facebook. That was pretty. Um, all right, uh, Hank. I'm, yeah, my signal jumps back and forth. We, we have bad signal. So hopefully we will not have the same <laughs> issue we had last week. <laughs> Um, uh, and I, don't, I hate Mountain Dew. I don't say anybody drinks Mountain Dew. I saw you drinking one a while ago, Hank. Uh, organic <laughs> Raw Roots Farm. Um, how many cows per acre? Okay, I'm gonna give you the traditional answer that you you will hear across Mississippi and from most cattle ranchers, and then I'll give you what the max thing. Um, they usually say an acre or two per cow. Uh, now personally, just like Samson Farms just said, um, personally though, we're doing an intense grazing plan, a very intense grazing plan. So our intense grazing plan usually allows us to have um, uh, probably about two cows per acre, acre and a half. Uh, and that's just because we are doing a heavy grazing plan. You will not see weeds on our farm growing um, just because we make them eat everything. We put a lot of cow in a small paddock and it's almost like survival of the fittest for a little bit. And they've gotten used to that rotation. So uh, correct cattle answer that you're going to hear around here is one acre per cow. Uh, or even one and a half acre per cow. Um, not that we're against that, but for us, with us doing intense grazing, we almost do uh, about two cow per 
one and a half acres. So we get a little half acre extra. <laughs> well, Colby drinks coffee, which it doesn't really affect him. It does. I could go to sleep right but now. But I don't drink any <laughs> caffeine. I mean, honestly. And I don't like coffee. So milk orange juice we drink for breakfast and then more water all day well i did have a glass of tea i made tea for the first time tonight with our i made chili tonight and some homemade cornbread so i made some tea with it but we hardly ever drink tea we're, we're not goat people um our, no our goat, next, single man said no goats yeah, for me eli i'm with you i'm not a goat person i just can't they just bother me they just you know don't get anything on your homestead that you don't like and i'm just not a well, for us, person, so. for us, we utilize our animals to work hey, for tree us. Farm. We try to take very good care of our animals, but whether it's birds, chickens give us eggs. We have to meet birds. Um, you know, our cattle is either going to be dairy cattle or beef cattle. Um, our bees work for us, too. So, I mean, we try to everything that we have, we have for a purpose. And um yeah, see, like bees, that's that's one of the crazy things this year. Um, we have not pulled fall honey yet because now normally it's not that cold, so we can pull it, you know, at this time of year. Uh, but I haven't even been able to get in our bees and pull fall, uh, being able to pull, you know, fall flow, which, which uh, we may leave it. I don't know. Next week is supposed to get up a little bit, so we're going to try this. Which we've also been very, very, very busy, too. And our pigs, which is probably one of the things that I'm most excited about, well, at least until Allie has her baby, um, is our little baby pigs. I mean, you know, we'll grow those up. We're going to pick one um, to breed to have another batch of babies um, besides the American guinea hogs. Now, she's going to be due in, like, January. But I'm excited that we're going to be able to have our own pork next year, too. I mean, that's one of my favorite things to eat, honestly. So. <laughs> um, organic Raw Roots Farm, since we're not far from you, if Allie, has, if Allie has a heifer, uh, you will have a calf if you want one. You can for sure buy it because we're not going to milk three. We have, we're going to be milking two. Well, we've got two jerseys bred. So if they they throw off heifers, we will probably be selling them. So. Well, and, and two, um, we have containers. Hey, getting started on homesteading. We have containers for sale. <laughs> and yeah. whatever you decide to fill it up with. What's hey, up, Chris? How are you? Our milk is in the refrigerator. Free milk. <laughs> the containers. You can buy the containers, but you've got free milk. So Yeah. We're trying different ways and what Missy's talking about is innovative ways to be able to sell certain things that you're not supposed to sell on the farm. So that's what she was discussing. Hey, single dad's on. Yeah, I know. I said, hey, Chris, oh, you weren't listening. You were not I was listening. Talking. I'm talking. Single oriented. Yes. Thank you. She's not a multitasker. <laughs> yeah, we love our cows. Uh, we we uh, we have one, two, three, four. Let's see. Somebody, John and Christy's home said that I can't wait to have cows. We have five. They've been a huge blessing to us. How many mom cows do we have? Five? Beauty, Allie, Elsa, Elsa, and then the three. No, up two, there. two up there. Cause one's a bull. Oh yeah, that's yeah. So right. we have five, five mama cows now, and so we'll we'll have one this year, one calf, which will be Allie, Allie this year, and then we'll have four more uh, Elsa, the first next year. Elsa, Elsa, Beauty, and Holly and Ginger will all be should be before Christmas. I yep. mean, before summer next year. Hey, Prairie Girl and Cowboy Homestead. Mm -hmm. So super excited about that. Twenty twenty is going to be like a huge year for us because. We're, we're going to have the freezer full of our meat birds that we have now. We're going to have two cows milking. We're going to have several baby calves. We're going to be killing off our pork. Um, Pe uh, Peppa, which is our American guinea hog, she's going to be having her babies yeah, the first so. of the year. Um, so we're going to have a 2020 is going to be like booming for us. So I'm just praying that everything goes smoothly. I mean, anything can happen on the Farm, but yeah, and with us having two different breeds of, <laughs> of pigs, our goal is to, uh, of course, have the feeders as, as providing, you know, the bacon and hams. But we're also gonna, gonna, uh, you know, process some of our American guinea hogs. Not all of them. We'll use some of them to sell as well because they're lard hogs and tend to make a good pork loin, pork, good pork chop, and plus they're heritage breed. So 
we, and we have a heritage breed uh, boar that's actually breeding them. So it's great, great, great quality meat. So Little Feed Farm said that's where I get my raw milk from now, selling milk for animals because you can't sell raw milk here. Um, I love it and got lots of good butter in the freezer. Hey, that's, right. that's one of my favorite yeah. things. And making butter is so easy to do. It is. Um, that's probably one of our best videos that we've got is mm -hmm. Misty's Butter video. And it's oh. so easy to do. So if you have access to where you can get your hands on raw milk, I mean, it's just, the, you will never see a brighter colored yellow butter that you, than you will get from raw fresh milk. Um, it's amazing. Little Feet Farm Homestead, we, we have, of course, our, our American Guinea Hog, but our feeders are the Blue Butt Yorkshires. And we've been real pleased with them. They're a pink pig uh, to start off, and they're kind of starting to turn colors now. One's turning a little brown like a Tamworth, but they have grown tremendously. I, I've been really impressed with them. I've not heard of them. I may have heard of Yorkshires, but not this exact breed. Um, but this was a local guy who, who sold them to us, so we were real pleased with them. We didn't know what to expect, and we, we were very, very pleased uh, pleased with them. They yeah, were, they and were the really, too, if so. y'all watched our penniless, um, you messed, messed it up. I'm sorry. I lost the name. Yes. Penniless Plantation. I knew it started with a piece that I like bacon. I really like bacon. Too. We eat a lot of bacon. A lot of bacon. So, yeah, we had, which I usually make bacon and biscuits, but this morning I made sausage and hey, biscuits. Hey, Chris, why are you blocked from going live now? Oh, you don't know. I'm sorry. We were just fishing to do, we always do a, a throw off to you for this next hour, but I'm surprised you're blocked. Keep us updated on that for sure. He said, I thought he said, I don't know why. I he doesn't. He, says, he doesn't know how. Wow. Chris, keep, keep us updated too. Shoot us a text as well. I hate that. That's crazy. Have you gotten any kind of response from YouTube or from your creator content showing why you're blocked? So he can't. He said he can't upload either. I'm blocked from uploading and going live as of just now. They are making like a lot of changes. I know. Yeah. Um. I bet money it's going to go back to them saying something about. Their policy Call because the they bars. were, Go ahead. they were like, I read the, did y'all, I'm sure most of y'all got an email today about the, Hey, there's green dream. Hey, green dream. Um, is being kid friendly or whatever. And you have to pick now to upload your videos. I mean like all that, that's crazy. So you have to pick all of that. Yeah. I will say this. If you're, if you're showing a lot, I mean, some of our videos have our children in it. Um, that, that's what I was just going to say, little feet. Um, if you have a lot of videos with your children in it, you, you, you do need to be careful with your content because they, they can um they can really mess you up. So uh, the Copa rules, that's right, Penny this plantation. So yeah, we got all that stuff today. We show our, our children, email. we show our children sometimes in our videos, but, but uh, you know, with us not doing a, a, a true child channel or kid channel, I mean, it's kid friendly, but we have to call it an adult channel. Yeah. Because um, our content is not yeah, so, geared directly to children. Like, we're not singing the ABCs for right, so the kids. So, just be careful. I, I would challenge but it everybody. Is, but to it, say, everything that we put is family friendly, like yeah. we said. But Just be careful. Because, I mean, that was the main thing for us. We we um, we really hashed out that email today. So, keep us updated, Chris. That's, that's crazy. Keep us updated. That's nuts. I, I, that's so surprising. Let us know uh -huh. what, what they say, single dad, and, and we'll go from there and here, too. I so. wonder, is and, and see, we're still so fresh and new to YouTube. I wonder if somebody can report, maybe somebody report like it. a troll or something, report you to go under review. So that's why they hold all your content. Maybe that's why they blocked your activity right now. Thanks, maybe. Hank. I'm not sure. Hank gave a good hint too, just to go watch some of these guys who are really good at it. I, I watch a I watch a content creator too that, that does kind of the ins and outs of YouTube too. Uh, it kind of talks about some of the things they're coming out with. So I, I've really enjoyed him. I don't know his name, so I don't want to throw it out, but 
I'll try to link him in another video that I've got, but he is, he's really good. So yeah, I'm terribly sorry about that too. I know that's frustrating. Yeah, man, me too. That, that is terrible. So I know it's very frustrating. Um, I was reading, uh, see you later, Pine Knot. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, so so the pigs, uh, I read a video of oh, someone a while ago make a comment. I don't even know. It's been too far back a while ago. But the pigs, you know, with us having five, we, we've got to move these pigs to pasture. Oh, yeah. Um, very soon. And with us moving them to pasture, I'm still trying to figure out how are we going to get them over there. Now, they're coming to us pretty easy now. You catch them. But I, you know, I know we catch them, but I'm thinking we got to catch five, and they got to move one at a time. They got to move a pretty good bit away from us. So I'm anxious to see how that's going to work. And I'm we better get them over there before they get too big, or we're not going to be running along. I know I was. They're they're not far from being as as tall as our American guinea hog, you know, just because they they're fast growers. But the thing American that's crazy, guinea hogs are like mo round. <laughs> no, they're short they're and they're like plump. mo round. They're plumpy. So, uh, yeah, see, that's heaven essentials. That's what I was going to probably do is try to take one or two at a time. The only thing is I'm trying to find out which one's the alpha. You know, each each herd has their own little one. It's kind of the the, the, the dominant one. So I can't figure out what, what one that is. I, I, one of the boars or one of the cut boars seems like it. he's going to be a little bit more dominant. So I wanna, if you get them out of that pecking order, they go crazy. So, I've got to figure out which one in, in the order because I'm going to try to take the, the one that's the least of the pegging order and go up from that. Do you we have do a have a trailer. We do. The, the, the only thing is I'm going to have to pull the trailer close enough to the pin because there's no way for us to back it into. the. In other words, the gate where the, the entryway is where, that we step into, we step over in there and it we can't open it per se. We just step over in there. But we could back it up far enough to just open the door, let somebody be in charge of the door put them in and then right. close it back. I mean, we could do that and then just drive them around to the fenced in area. Yeah. Being in this plantation. And we're going, we're going to have some, we're going to have some rodeos for sure. We're going to have some kids hey, grabbing hey, onto them. So farm. Um, one good thing about these, they're not big and they're, they're still pretty. They like us a lot. And I, you know what I think's helped us. I think, I really think the American guinea hog has helped us. They kind of made them all, come close hey, and, and hang out with us because the guinea hogs were real close to us. So to me, they seem very skittish at first, but the, because they see the American guinea hog coming to us, they know we're not, you oh, know, I we're was not hitting one on the nose the other day. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're really, really stuck gentle. my hand over in the pen and was rubbing it on its nose. Osborne, that's exactly, we have some cattle panels from our garden and that's what we're going to do is try to hurt them into it, <laughs> take the gate down and hurt them into the back of that trailer. Um, the only other fear of that too is we, we we are going into a pasture, so our goal is to make sure they're comfortable there. I'm anxious to see how they're going to do with the South American guinea hog. I thought about even moving the American guinea hog out there. I just don't know. Uh, we we've got some heavier money invested in the yeah. guinea hog, and so. she's pregnant. So yeah. if we lost her, <laughs> we would really be losing some. So I don't know how they're going to do without the guinea hog because definitely our boar guinea hog George is definitely the alpha. He is um. I mean, he 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 kind of takes care of them too. So when we take them away, um, I'm anxious to see I'm how they're sure going to do. I'm sure that they'll do fine. Though I'm sure they'll adjust over a few days. Uh, my biggest concern is because they are still so little. I don't want something like a fox or coyote or something like that to get them. And that, which Hattie May does help because she chases stuff in the woods all the time, but. I would be nervous that something would make them their meal. That's uh, probably my biggest concern. I was born original. Yes. Um, they're going in electric fence. They're actually going in and basically almost, uh, we when we went to polyface, of course, Joel Salatin. We've we, got a video on that yeah, showing his, his, his setup. We've got a poly wire that we're going to actually put them in. We use poly tape here just because that's what we have for our cattle uh, an intense grazing plan. So we will do the same thing with them. We're not using true hog wire, like the premier fencing hog wire. We're actually using just a strew hog tape or basically a poly tape that we use for our cow. It's an inch wide and we'll run two strands around the bottom. We're actually hooking it to a 12 volt um, battery. So it's going to give a good, good. And we can discuss putting them on one side of the permanent fenced in the area that they're in now and going ahead and putting a small <laughs> section up of electric. To make them get used to it. To train them that while they're in the permanent fence, 
where, hey, I don't like this. I don't want to touch this. This is not cool. They've stayed in the fridge. She's been in the fridge the whole time. I've been watching her too. I'm OCD about it. So I'm thinking, what is she doing back there? <laughs> That's all the time, y'all. I always have at least one kid in the refrigerator. But anyway, that I ha we've discussed it. And that's probably, I think, one of the best ideas to do is to put them in, in there, hey, train them in the, in the permanent fence and let them understand, I don't want to get near this and then move them over once they realize <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I think that's probably what we'll probably do. see. What happens is when we say we're going live, we're like, okay, everybody's gonna be quiet. You know, when you're trying to teach five children to be quiet, so they're like, well, they're not gonna get on to us while they're on their live. So let's do whatever we can. We want to do as long as we're quiet doing it, they won't get on to us. So that's what they're doing. They, that fridge has been open like the whole time. So I should put a sign like kitchen clothes kind of refrigerator. Fridge so. <laughs> raider. Did you get that? Fridge. Raider, refrigerator. Cute. I'm just crazy. But um, anyway, so we're trying to get them over there. I don't know when we're going to do it. We we're waiting to be a little bit bigger so they would not go underneath the fence um, because they are they they like to dig. So we're going to try to make sure they got enough um, enough growth to them to where their nose can touch this wire. So yeah, they said that they let one out at a time to test the fence. Yes. Very much so. I always had less stress. Yeah. And see, that's why I was saying, I think if we take. We're going to put it into the main permanent yeah, fence. The, where their spot. permanent, where their permanent fence is now, train them in there and let them see, I don't like this. And then once we move them over, they will have been trained to where really if they got out, they still can't go anywhere. But to teach them. I truly believe in that, in that our cattle has been trained very good to electric fencing. I believe I could leave them out and they would be fine. Actually, our fence sometimes turns off and we, we don't have no problem. But I actually believe our American guinea hog. Yeah. We could actually leave our American guinea hog out and they'd stay right where they're at. Just because these pigs are not going to be with the guinea hog anymore. We just want to make sure that, that they abide to the fence. Now, here's the good thing. Because that, that area is not too far from the pigs, if they get out, I believe they're going to come straight back to their permanent fencing where the American guinea hogs are. So that will help us, you know, them. if they all of a sudden get out, at least they're going to go back to that true permanent fencing, which I'm happy with. So Osborne Original said that's after they had a training wire in the physical fence. Yes. And I, I think that's very smart. And that's, I'm sure that's what we're probably going to do. So. Definitely. Um, the human culture beds are doing good, by the way. If you've seen that, um, we've got them with row covers right now. So I think everything's going to grow good because most of those things are cold hardy in our area. So I think I think we're going to be OK. I really do. Um, I'm worried about um, the rest of the peppers like Mrs. said. And I think I'm, I think we're going to lose a lot of our potatoes. I think we're going to save half our potatoes. I'm just gonna I think dig we're gonna lose potatoes up. Well, you know, we dug. Where are those purple ones from the other day? Did you see those? The I kids might have onions. Uh-uh, they were, they were pumpkins. I mean, uh, potatoes. We've got some potatoes we probably can dig. Uh, they'd be little, but we could probably dig them. Hey, hey Farmstead Talk. Yeah. Um, single man said pigs are smart. One week of hot wire, and then he turns it off. That's right. We could we could probably do that with our cows, too, which is yeah. what Colby was saying a while ago. Because we've tried, I mean... It only takes a few times, and then they're like, "Okay, we got." I, it. I don't even have. I never have a problem with my cows test, testing the fence anymore. I could leave. The, I could literally leave the fences down, and they would stand right there where they're used to standing. They just because we've trained them so well. Um, actually, my two dairy cows, they can lead up. They'll lead us to the next paddock. They're so used to going to these paddocks and rotations that they'll actually lead us to the paddock. And so. when we first. When we first started working with them, I mean, y'all know it was it was a pain, but go back and watch the video with Sizzles. That was a pain, but now we got it going on. So. I don't care where Sizzles at at this point. He was terrible. He was a pretty. If y'all had seen that though, he was a pretty bull calf. He really was. I, I, I just I can't stand him because he was stupid. He was stupid. When you have. A one that's going through literally tearing down your barbed wire fence, it's time for them to go. And he wasn't big enough for us to kill off. He was just crazy. So he was crazy. Little foot little feet 
farm, send my cow for five months, and she's trained to poly tape. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Ours are too. The, the one that is up on the second property of ours is like that as well. Well, it's not Thanks ours. Thanks for it's coming, Wood Tree Farm. Yeah, the two calves up there, the one that uh, we went and checked on it today, actually, the, the calf that's around five to six months old, she is trained to it. No she's issue huge whatsoever. She's too. a big calf. Um, the newest one, the, the baldy that we had two days ago, or that he had two days ago, She'll cross right under the polytech because we've got a little higher, of course, for but them being cows. But he's but, not going to go far from his mom. Yeah, he's not is going Is it a girl far. or a boy? I thought little you boy. said it was a boy. It is. Oh, what did I say? I'm sorry. You little said cat. she, but. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll be honest with you. And American wire, three strands of poly. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed with anybody who can keep goats in, yeah, period. That's what I was just going to say. If you can keep your goat in, period, you're doing good. <laughs> um, Getting started on homesteading, if I could have held him, if my blood pressure and, and not have a heart attack, I would have kept sizzle. But he was giving me high blood pressure. Yeah, sure. I mean, he, we would have probably been. He was been, breaking our barbed wire. I mean, even, we would not even be, you know, 150 foot from him. And he would just go crazy. Just walking behind him, and he would literally go through the fence trying to get away from us. It was nuts. It and was see, nuts. but what he was doing, though, he was actually training Beauty, which was my youngest meat heifer here he was making um, her crazy. he was making her crazy so when i moved him out she's back like she used to be she's real calm and tame and, and she's not the kind she's not like our jerseys where she's gonna she's come, gonna up, come to right us up to us but she yeah. is she is a sweet calf too but our cow excuse me let's see I was yeah we did get rid of him. i live in town but have been pondering getting rabbits for fertilizer okay that's a good idea <laughs> prairie girl and cowboy homestead uh, yeah, they might, if, if they smell her, they're going to get in that fence. So you might want to put a heavy, heavy electrical wire on that one. So, um, we had a, our, we, our bull is gentle, but if he smells one of our heifers that they're in heat, which he's bred them all now, he only gets three shots a year. But, uh, if he smells one of them, he wants to get to them. If they're across the fence, he's going to try to get to them as quick as he can. So you better watch out for sure on that one. So. Which is not a bad thing if they breed her. It's hopefully she's big enough. <laughs> Lord, get rid of that crazy cow. We did. Yeah, we did. We did. After what, the second time he tore down the fence, we said, buddy, you're a goner. Well, he, he got out like three times. And then, but two times he actually, he actually broke tore the permanent fencing. Yeah. I mean, and not that we were chasing him. I mean, like I said, he was just going crazy. Well, we, so. would, we would be trying to walk behind him to get him to move with the rest of the cows. But he just would... I mean, he was just nuts. He would just do his own thing. He would start ripping the, through the fence. And we're like, okay, this is enough. And see, our biggest thing was this. If he is this crazy being this small, then it's really going to be bad when he gets older. So, I mean, and what we were going to put him right in the freezer. So, that's not... I mean, he wasn't going to get huge, huge, but he was going to get bigger. And I felt like the bigger he got, the more difficult it was going to be. And when you have small children out there, which we don't let them go in the pens very often with the cattle anyway, just because they're so big. But I just, you know, he would bust down the fence and like be running around in the yard. And that happened twice, not once, but twice. So he would literally break down the fence and get in our yard. So we were like, okay, this is enough. Well, Josh, freezer count for the crazy ones. That's right. But see, he was not big enough to do anything. It would with. actually cost us a whole lot more money. Yeah. I mean, he, he it was not hard. worth killing. I mean, he was just too small. So we just took him up to the sale barn and sold him. And um, I mean, you know, <laughs> that we, I knew that he was going to get bigger and it was going to be more difficult. And when we were chasing him around in the yard, I was like, uh, -uh. <laughs> we are, I'm not doing this again. Um, once shame, once shame on you, twice shame on me. So after number two, we were like, that's it, buddy. You're gone. Eli, you're correct. Uh, if you have goats, your neighbors have goats. That's, that's about right. So, um, <laughs> somebody asked me a question on a Let's see, ever try a yoke? My neighbor puts them on his anxious cows sometimes. We never could get close enough to sizzle. Now, every one of our other cows, we pretty much, I mean, we can, they'll come to us. Uh, That's not an issue whatsoever. Ike, our, our, our new meat cow, basically, that's going to provide, it's going to go to freezer camp next year. He is the most skittish, but it, when I say skittish for him, his temperament is easy. Yeah. I mean, I can pet him, but he's not going to come up and love on me like, 
Elsa and Allie will come up and they'll just kind of love on yeah. you. you know, they'll just kind of bump you and want you to pet them. And even, even our bull, will too, the, the Jersey bull. But uh, none of them are, are to a point where they're. Now, yeah, I will he's say not this, like we, crazy, crazy, no, like running through the fence, no, no, getting no, no, off no. in your yard. He, we would, y'all, we chased him through the woods. We chased him from one side of our property to the other side of the property. Like I said, not once, but twice. And that's when we were like, no, we're not doing this. If you hadn't anymore. seen the video of uh, talking about rodeo, if you hadn't seen the video, of, no, we used video. to have to move Daddyo. We used to not have any fencing on the backside of our property. Mm -hmm. So we moved our cows by just walking, free, <laughs> free walking, you know, and. So that was that was not bad. Now we could easily do it, but when we first got them, that was a little dangerous. So uh, we got a video of, of every time we put Daddy O out of the field going to another paddock. He basically. would get he would so go excited. Crazy. He he would just his, go around in circles like bucking yeah, around. He so. would be bucking everywhere, but it was because he was excited. <laughs> it would kind of make you nervous funny. though, because he's 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 not real tall, but he's very he's still a very he's big stout. animal. I, we agree. Well, Osborne that irritates me gets cool. <laughs> yes, uh, Osborne originals. We're the same way. Basically, if, if something gets out and keeps getting out, it's either going to be in the freezer or either it's got to go. If we can't make well, it. Well, it's like animal. I said earlier. One time shame on you. Two times shame on me. Um, and see, so. the crazy thing is too. Like we have we have too many roosters. So when we um, do these meat chickens in a few weeks, uh, we're going to probably take four or five of those out because they they keep getting out. They either keep hurting our our hens or either they'll we'll throw them in with the pigs, but then they'll jump right they'll, back on yeah, the, they'll the fly coop. Out. So uh, it's time for them to go as well. Well, so. we have six and two are pullets and then the rest of them are pretty big boys, but they keep roughing up my hens. I mean, my tens, there are what, three or four, their favorites and they have no feathers on the back. And um, some of them were actually starting to bleed. And I was, I told Colby, I was like, there's no way the roosters can do this. They've got mites. So I made, we got in there one night and we called them. And <laughs> I was looking all up under their feathers and stuff like that, that was under their wings to make sure they didn't have mites. And they didn't. We didn't see any evidence of mites at all. So we moved the roosters out and put them in a totally different area just to give our hens a break. Because it's not like we're wanting fertilized eggs right now anyway. So we're going to give our hens a break. Um, little people farm home said, uh, my, I, when we throw a, any hay out, our bull, both our bulls, the one that the big, big bull, Ferdinand and the smaller bull, which is the one here, they rub against it. I've got a video coming out, not tomorrow, but probably Friday or Saturday. Um, <laughs> like daddy Oak was an aspiring line or something. He, he like had it all over him like a maid. Uh, they love it. They'll rub all in it. And, and I mean, he'll literally lay down and just rub in it like he's getting a massage. So it's it's funny. Put a fresh hay bale out and ran. That's pretty funny. Yep. And then Osborne Original says, yeah, roosters taste real good in their winter. <laughs> it's going to be some good chicken and dumplings with the roosters. Yeah, I think we have a total of seven. Two are pullets. Like just those are the ones that I hatched out this past spring. I think two. Maybe three of those, and then the rest of them are ones that we've had. Samson Farms, um, our our Ferdinand, which is our big bull, he he's is um he's, he's a Angus. Low, he's probably well he's a he's an Angus Semitol mix, and his legs, I mean his legs are like this. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. He, I saw him his today. Neck is even bigger. He's a big old boy, but he's he probably easily weighs over a ton. Uh, I don't know how big he is, but he's the one breeding our bigger stock. So, hey, stepping back in time. Thanks for joining us. We saw Kentucky had a good bit of snow. Did y'all get Kentucky uh, snow in the part of Kentucky that y'all are in? We, um, uh, organic raw roots. <laughs> Cold face. We, um, we name our cows, even the ones that's going to freezer camp. We don't name our chickens because it's just too many. Um, that's a good idea, little big farm. We named our American guinea hog. We keep saying we're going to name the feeder hogs, but we actually haven't yet. Well, there's so many of them. Which some of them are, they're just now starting to get some characteristics where you can tell apart. them apart. Like one's got a big black smear on its nose. Like we might could name mm -hmm. that one Oreo or something. I mean, one of them's got a, a darker spot on its rear end. Um, but they're just now getting 
we've gotten, but we've, 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 we've talked to the kids and of course Misty, same way. It's one of those things that when we got the animals, mm -hmm. the only animals that are not going to be pulled or put in the freezer camp is the dog and cat outside. Other than that, everyone has a purpose of food. So uh, I think there are my, our kids are pretty understandable of that. They don't, mm -hmm. there's not been an issue of saying, well, why can't we keep this one? They're, you know, they know where state comes from and everything else. So. Stepping back in town, Kentucky said we got a good covering of snow near single digits last night. Well, it was down in the 20s here. And that was, that's cold enough. We had our L, uh, alley's water had a sleet of uh, uh, sheet of ice over the top of it. And then I put a picture on Instagram today of the fountain that was froze. We had icicles hanging off that. And it was actually really pretty, but. We have a call for our cows. We have a call for our pigs. We, they all have each, each personal call. But like I said, the pigs. It's just hay pigs right now, and when those mm -hmm. pigs hear that, they're coming. I just yell, beady, 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 <laughs> and they come running for food. <laughs> What's so funny is our cows, we have two different cows for our different cows, the ones here and the ones up there. So uh, it's funny because I'll get up there and call, say the wrong call, and they won't come. I have to, I have to remember what call I have for each one of them. So. People ask me all the time, how do you eat the animal you named? Well, with a good knife inside the mat, inside the mat. <laughs> I agree. Well, I mean, you know, God gave us animals to utilize. For He gave them to us. They're for us. And, um, Good you know, I, even down to our cat and dog. Now, Hattie Mae works for us. She runs the woods and runs Colby's deer off. But she also runs off. I'm thinking about calling her, too. She, she runs <laughs> off all kinds of stuff that comes in through the night. And she also, and our cats, so our, well, we're down to one cat because when we left and went to HOA, we come back to one, but even our, because we, we had them as companion, we got them in a pair of two, but one is now not with us anymore. So anyway, um, but even the cats were killing mice and um, I didn't have any problems with the squirrels coming in the yard this year, which was the main reason why I got them. So they, we have all of our animals for a reason. Yeah. And I don't foresee us getting anything that we're going, going to just make pets. Um, now, we do want turkey. But again, the ne I think the next thing we will probably get turkey is this spring is turkey. For sure, turkey. I mean, they'll be easy for us. Um, so, yeah, the fountain was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, we actually, um, we're not far from Summit at all. I think we just say, fine. come here, you pepper <laughs> for everything. I think that's funny. <laughs> His dad's actually a butcher, too. By, he was a butcher. Not by profession now, not by profession but he actually went to school for that. So I keep telling Colby he needs to get his, da his dad down Thanks, here to help feet. us. Like when we do the chickens and stuff, but he's like, my dad don't want to come down here and do that for <laughs> us. I'm like, but he, he could teach us so much stuff. So I, I do. Okay. I could do okay with the chicken and do okay with the deer. I, I don't know how good I'd do with cutting actually loins and pork chops off the pig like I'm supposed to. But his dad knows how to do all that. Thank you, Little Feet Farm. Um, J and C's Oregon that's, Homestead. That's really cool, Johnny Christie. I'd like to hear what you say to that because I've seen that, and I think it's it's dealing with children and not answering the new questions that Copa has put out. So I'm anxious to hear that. Yeah, we we look at animals as food as well. Um, it's like I went deer hunting a while ago and. I uh, saw one just a little too far off for a bow, but um, they have a purpose for us as well. So, yeah. Well, I think we are getting close to our time. Um, just remember, uh, usually we, we plug Chris with Single Dad Homestead right now. Right now, uh, he said his channel is off to a point where he is blocked to do live. So I'm not sure what the situation is there. Just keep checking with Chris. Um, and. I just want to first say thank you all for, for watching our live. Thank you for coming on and talking. This is one of my favorite times to mm -hmm. be able to, to conversate, 
using your word, back and forth. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for watching our videos. We have a good video coming up tomorrow and the next day. We've already got those taken care of and edited. So you'll see those over the next two days. Um, and you'll see our bull getting into his hay like he really likes to. So, um, but thank you all so much for coming on. And, uh, and hopefully next week we will, we will hopefully have a calf. Y'all, she's got us on pins and needles, but we are hoping for a baby soon. So y'all stay tuned and Thanks, Green Dream. hopefully we'll be able to get her over in her stable and hopefully she'll be able to have her baby soon and we can start milking. Yes. Yeah, Y'all seen us, of course, milk Elsa and you've seen the stanchion train alley, but we're actually hopefully going to be milking. We're just alley, waiting so. y'all. We're just waiting. Thank y'all so much again and God bless y'all and happy homestead.